Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the use of tool tips, kind of why we use them, and then a quick hands on in Tableau about how to use them uh, and, and, and some of the features that you have in Tableau. So, why would we want to use a tool tip? We want to ensure that all of the necessary data is visible to the person using the visualization, right? We've talked about this. We don't want people to have to remember things. So, why would we hide things? in a tooltip? And the answer comes from Schneiderman's mantra. And Schneiderman's mantra says, we give the user an overview first, then we let them zoom and filter to what's important, and then we give them details on demand. And so, while we say we want to provide all of the information to a person in a visualization, often that means that we would provide them far too much information, right? So, we have this dashboard here, which is one of the ones that comes out of the box with Tableau. But we want to give them the overview and let them say, oh, look at this one. This one's kind of darker. What, what, why do I, what's going on here? And so then I can zoom in there and then I can provide the details on demand. I say, I've got a real problem in Littleton. Now I have to go investigate Littleton. That's just kind of the process of Overview first, zoom and filter, details on demand. So the tooltips allow for you to be able to provide multiple data dimensions that you don't really want to include in the visualization because it's just too detailed or it doesn't make sense to slice and dice in certain ways. And more importantly, to provide those to the user on an as needed basis. This reduces the amount of clutter on the visualization because as we've said before, too much information is as much of a problem as too little. Our goal is to reduce search overhead, so providing them an overview first with a clear direction as to what's high and low and what, what they might actually need to focus on. Um, it allows us to provide that strong overview without sacrificing uh, necessary detail when the user needs it. All right. Now, tooltips in Tableau, when you add all of your fields that you've added to the view and you mouse over the tooltip, if you haven't done anything to the tooltip, it just shows you all of the field names and values of all the fields um, that you've added. And, and they're not really in any um, logical order and they're not formatted in a way that makes sense to people. And so they just see this and it's just a bunch of information. But with a little bit of work, we can show the important information and get rid of the stuff that we really don't want to show. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. We have um, that same dashboard that we were looking at before, but it doesn't have um, it doesn't have a formatted tooltip yet. It's just got the state and the profit ratio, right? So what we'll have to do here is go into the tooltip mark. And we see that it's just an editor, kind of like anything else you'd expect to see in a, in a computer program, right? Where you can modify the font, you can modify the font size, um, the font style, the color, etc. So why don't we just go ahead and add a title to this tooltip? I'm going to click before state, hit enter, profit ratio by state. I'll make this bold, I'll make it 12, maybe I'll make it that strange color that Tableau loves so much, which is that orange. And there I have profit ratio by state. And then um, the question now, now becomes is, do I, do I want to put the state because I'm already hovering over a state, I know that, but we can't always trust that everybody knows their geography. Um, so we should probably just leave it there, knowing that people are going to be mousing over Colorado or Texas. Or we could, instead of having this title say profit ratio by state, we could say profit ratio information or maybe detail for, and then make this a field. So then we don't need this at all and it becomes very uh, it becomes very dynamic to the user that they're seeing profit ratio detail for state 
Then we give them the aggregate profit ratio. So maybe we'll call this um, state level. And let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. And we see how that changes for every state we mouse over. Okay. Although this is, so this is giving us this idea of overview and then zoom to get the actual level of profit ratio, which is negative 21.6. Now we have to add this idea of details on demand. And I've already created this graph here, which is showing the um, profit ratio for all cities, right? This is all cities across all states. And so what we want to do is put this graph onto the tooltip for the map, but only have that um, graph show the information for that state. And it's really super easy because if you'll notice here, state is already part of this graph, right? So let's see what happens. When I go to tooltip, I can go up here, add a couple of rows, and I can go up here to insert sheets tooltip profit ratio by city. And it puts in this code, you know, we could have written this in ourselves, but it's easier to use the insert menu. And you see here where it says filter equals all fields. That means all the fields that are slicing and dicing the data in this graph are gonna be applied as filters to this sheet. So because we're slicing and dicing by state, state will be one of the filters. And so that graph, which shows all the cities will only show the ones for the state that we've chosen. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to mouse over Colorado now and I see just Colorado. No, it does say that the view is too large to show. There's something we can do about that. Wyoming doesn't have a whole lot of um, places, so it fits. Oregon fits. Washington is too large to show. But the interesting thing is here, is here we can see that, you know, in, in Michigan, all of the cities at least are profitable. In Texas, a lot are unprofitable. In Mesquite, negative 168%, what's going on there? Uh, the size of Texas is, as far as the number of cities that we have in Texas is hiding the fact that we have some massive problems in some of those cities, right? So, but that's a detail that we can provide to the user. Now we can go back into our tooltip and we can modify the size. So maybe we could make this maximum height 600. And you'll have to be very careful to understand what devices your people are looking at this on. But Tableau is not going to send things off the screen. So I'll hit OK again. And now, oh, I get all of Colorado now. I get all of Washington. I don't get all of California, which I don't expect to. Um, and I don't get all of Texas, but I get pretty much everybody else. And so that's a pretty nice looking tooltip. There's a couple of other features I want you to be aware of is that this idea of when to show the tooltips, so responsive or on hover. Um, all that really means is with on hover, there's a slight delay before showing it. With, with in responsive showing them instantly, there's like there's no delay. And so you see as your mouse goes across, it's showing all of them. I kind of like to do it on hover so that when the user stops moving their mouse, it shows the one that they stop on. I think it looks better. There's also these buttons up here on the top, which you can keep or exclude. Now those buttons are gone. If you don't want them to be able to filter using the tooltip or create sets using the tooltip, I'll go back and show you that there there it is with with the command buttons keep only and exclude are there no keep only or exclude when i've turned the buttons off and that is tooltips there's a lot more that we can do with it you can go ahead and check the tableau documentation for what all those different buttons do this was just the overview on how to kind of format and make your uh, tooltips support the idea of Schneiderman's mantra with the details on demand.